Welcome back to the continuation of our introduction to the Revelation chapter 20, the Millennial Kingdom. And if you haven't listened to yesterday's devotional yet, I encourage you to go listen to that, jot down some notes, keep that paper and pen handy, because I am going to give you some more verses today. We've been looking at uh, a number of things that are true. Yesterday, we looked at why a Millennial Kingdom and then we began looking at some of the things that will be a reality in the Millennial Kingdom. We want to continue that list today. We saw already that peace and joy and holiness will be a reality in the Millennial Kingdom. Also, notice with me today that glory will be a reality in the Millennial Kingdom. This kingdom will be a glorious kingdom with the glory of God on full display. All the citizens of the world will be able to travel to Jerusalem and see the glorified Savior face to face. You can see that in Isaiah chapter 4 and verse 2. Isaiah chapter 35 and verse 2. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 5 and Isaiah chapter 60 verses 1 through 9. I hope that you're writing these verses down and that you'll study them in connection with Revelation chapter 20 and what the Bible teaches regarding the Millennial Kingdom. Another thing that will be a reality in the Millennial Kingdom will be comfort. Jesus will fully minister to every need so that there will be no want anywhere on the earth. You can see that in Isaiah chapter 12. Verses 1 and 2, Isaiah chapter 30, verse 26, Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 and 2, Isaiah 49, 13, Isaiah 51, 3, Isaiah 66, verses 21 through 23, Jeremiah 31, verses 23 to 25, and Zephaniah chapter 3, verses 18 through 20. So comfort is going to be a reality in the millennial kingdom, but justice is also going to be a reality. Perfect justice will be administered to every individual. We see the justice of the millennial kingdom in Isaiah 9 and verse 7, in Isaiah 32 verse 16, in Isaiah 42 verses 1 through 4, in Isaiah 65 verses 21 through 23, and Jeremiah 23 and verse 5. Another reality in this millennial kingdom will be the fullness of knowledge. An increase in the teaching ministry of the Holy Spirit will result in enhanced mental capabilities. Not only that, but people will be living a lot longer. Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 and 2, and verse 9. Isaiah 41, verses 19 and 20. Isaiah 54, verse 13, and Habakkuk 2, and verse 14, talk about that fullness of knowledge in the millennial kingdom. And part of the reason for that is because another reality of the millennial kingdom is instruction. It will be King Jesus who will instruct his people in the ways of God. You can see that in Isaiah chapter 2, verses 2 and 3. Isaiah chapter 29, verses 17 through 24. Isaiah 32, verses 3 and 4. Jeremiah 3, verses 14 and 15. And Micah chapter 4 and verse 2. I think probably one of the most exciting realities of the millennial kingdom in my mind is this one, the removal of the curse. In Genesis chapter 3, verses 17 through 19, we know that that is a chapter that the fall of man came, uh, that man fell into sin, and that the curse uh, came upon mankind, upon the devil, and upon this world because of sin. And uh, in Genesis 3, verses 17 through 19, at the fall, God placed a curse upon the earth. And in the millennial kingdom, that curse will be removed, resulting in an increase in the productivity of the earth, and in wild animals will be losing their, fero their, their ferocious nature and ability to injure and kill. And you can see that in Isaiah chapter 11, verses 6 through 9, and also Isaiah 65. Verses tw uh, and verse 25. Not only will the curse be removed from the earth, but in many senses, the curse will be removed from mankind. We can see that in one instance as sickness will be removed. The king will be a healer so that sickness and death will vanish from the earth. Death will only exist as punishment for extreme sin. You can see that in Isaiah chapter 33 and in verse 24. Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 17. And Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 6. Another reality in the millennial kingdom and King Jesus rules is the healing of the deformed. 
Isaiah chapter 29, verses 17 through 19, and Isaiah 35, verses 3 through 6 talk about that. Protection will be a reality in that millennial kingdom. There will be a supernatural preservation of life during the millennial kingdom. Read Isaiah chapter 41, verses 8 through 14. Isaiah 62, verses 8 and 9. Jeremiah 23, 6. Joel 3, 16 and 17. Amos 9, 15. Zechariah 9 and verse 8. And Zechariah chapter 14, verses 10 and 11. To see that protection. Another reality in the millennial kingdom is there will be no oppression. There will be no social, political, racial, or religious oppression in that day. I encourage you to read Isaiah chapter 14, verses 3 through 6. Isaiah 42, 6 and 7. Isaiah 49, verses 8 and 9. And Zechariah 9, 11 and 12 to see the reality of that. There will also be no immaturity. It seems that there will be no mental retardation or dwarfed bodies. And extreme longevity will also be restored. Isaiah 65 and verse 20. There will also be reproduction by living people. The living tribulation saints and the believing Jews who enter the millennium will reproduce. The population of earth will soar, yet all children will be born with a sin nature and will therefore need salvation the exact same way that we are saved today. Jeremiah 30, verse 20. Jeremiah 31, 29. And Ezekiel 47, verse 22. I'll talk about that. You know, the Bible also talks about labor in the millennial kingdom a perfect economic system in which all needs will be met by the labor of men under the, the direction of the king of kings and the lord of lords it will be a fully industrialized world you can see that isaiah 62 verses 8 and 9 isaiah 65 verses 21 through 23 and jeremiah 31 and verse 5 because of this it will be a time of economic prosperity. The perfect labor situation will produce economic abundance so that there will be no want. Uh, in order to learn more about this, read and study Isaiah chapter 30, verses 23 to 25. Isaiah chapter 35, verses 1 and 2 and verse 7. Jeremiah 31, verse 5 and verse 12. Ezekiel 34 and verse 26. Ezekiel 26, verses 29 and 30. Joel 2, 21 to 27. Amos 9, 13 and 14. And Zechariah 8, verses 11 and 12. During the millennial kingdom, there will be an increase in solar and lunar light. This will produce longer growing seasons, accounting for the increase in productivity. You can read about that in Isaiah 30 and verse 26. There will be a unified worship, all or unified language rather, first of all. All language barriers will be removed, Zechariah 3 9. There will also be a unified worship. The entire world will worship God through the Lord Jesus Christ. You can read about that in Isaiah 45, verse 23. Isaiah 66, verses 17 through 23. Zephaniah 3, 9. Zechariah 14, 16. Zechariah 8, 23. And Malachi 1, 11. And then also there will be the, sub, the fullness of the Spirit. All who are subject to the King will experience divine enablement and presence. You can see that. In Isaiah 44 and verse 3, Ezekiel 36 verses 26 and 27, Ezekiel 37 and verse 14, and Joel 2 verses 28 and 29. As we've looked at some introductory groundwork here, these are just a few of the glories of that future kingdom. And uh, beginning tomorrow, we will take some time to look at these verses in Revelation chapter 20 and unpack what they teach us regarding the millennial kingdom and what we could literally call a period of 1,000 years of heaven on earth. And we will get into these verses uh, on our next day. Now, let me give you this thought as we close. Think about all the blessings of this millennial kingdom, and yet you'll find that even with a perfect world like that, or as perfect as this world could be, they get the end of it, that Satan is still going to be able to lead a final rebellion against God, even though Jesus has given this world 1,000 years of peace on this earth. They will still rebel against him, showing us the rebellion that is in the heart of man and the bent 
away from God and the fact that mankind deserves the judgment of God in this life and in eternity. Have a great day.